talking about uh, how our body can really thrive off of uh, a plant-based diet. That's where we need to be trying to get to. Mostly this is all of the phytochemistry. When I say phytochemistry, we're saying phyto means plant. Mm -hmm. Chemistry, basically the, the biochemical reactions we have with the plants. Our synergistic behaviors that we're supposed to express with our bodies. But a lot of times, like, I've seen people come in and they have an old Chevy type of uh, mm -hmm. concept, you know. Uh, they're thinking they can get their body to run new, you know. And basically you can regenerate, but uh, we're not putting in uh, the right type of fuel inside of our body. You know, we change our oil in our cars, right? Mm -hmm. We do change our oil in our cars. So brother might be a, a, a good Benz, you know? He might be a nice looking Benz. And, but he got some things going on internally that he ain't running so efficiently. So we gotta make sure that we prolong our life by detoxifying the toxins out of our body. Just like as much as we take care of our cars, you know? So make sure we're putting in the right type of fuel and um, it's time for a tune-up, guys. It's time for a tune-up. Do some preventive things that's going to help you, you know, get rid of those things, you know? These things like to calcify. They calcify. When we have too much magnesium, I mean too much calcium in our body, we are low on magnesium. So what happens is we start to stiffen up, you know, our bones start to stiffen, tighten up, tension starts to happen, high blood pressure can happen because we're not putting in the right type of fuel in our body. So I like to ask everybody when they get here, are you gonna do the right type of things that's going to prevent you from having a heart attack? You know, you have a heart attack today, you're not gonna be able to go to work tomorrow, the next day, the next day. That's, that's it. That's the last little concept right there because heart disease is basically the number one cause of our disease in the United States. So we like to go to places like this. Um, this place is located up there in Las Vegas. Um, it's called the Heart Attack Grill. Yes, and you get to eat there free as long as you are 350 pounds, you know. And they already give the names of the burgers. It's a triple bypass burger, what's going to happen to you. They give you a coronary heart disease hot dog, and that's what, you know, that's what they name it. They name it that, so you can see. Yeah, and people go there. You know. No, this is, this is actually real footage. You can go to Las Vegas. Uh, so they already planning this on you if you eat here, but we still do the certain things. It ain't, it ain't just like they have it in Las Vegas. We got it here too. We eat the McDonald's, we eat the, the Wendy's and things like that. So we don't know what's inside these foods. We're talking about chemistry here right now. They got a chemical called polydimethylsilicone, and they put it inside of um, our fries. You know, they put it inside the french fries. You know, a lot of us will say we vegan, we can go somewhere and go get some french fries. You know, okay, you know, you're traveling, you may want to go get some french fries, thinking that it's fine, but it's not. This thing is used in uh, breast implants, butt implants. You know, it's an uh, anti-foaming agent. And we still eat, we feed our children these things, you know, they eat the chicken nuggets from McDonald's and things like that. But uh, that's not even real chicken. It's 56% corn. And we know that corn is uh, mostly GMO. And then they have the nerve to go ahead and put beef extracts in it, and it's not natural. You know, beef and milk derivatives that's inside of a potato. Even in Domino's, everywhere, they're doing this type of thing. So they try to find a way to make the, uh, the government itself, you know, putting meat in everything. You know, even if you go into any of these fast food restaurants, want something convenient, um, they're gonna put it in there. So what I did was look up some studies, try to pull up some things that can relate to people around the world. So I looked in Africa to see if they had a couple of uh, conditions like us. We have the number one heart disease, right? We're trying to prevent it. Everybody wants to prevent a heart attack, of course. But um, so I looked over there in Uganda's population and their studies were saying that uh, it's non-existent. It don't exist over there. Nobody's having a heart attack over there. Nobody's having heart disease over there. You know why? No, so it's natural. No GMO products. No GMO products. No. no. They don't have fast food restaurants for their convenience. Yes, yes. It's all. It's, they can't have that stuff over there. 
So it's a high fiber plant-based diet that's keeping them from having uh, heart disease. But here with us, on this diagram up here on A, that's how our arteries look. Our arteries are thinning out. They, they're narrowing really, really fast because uh, we're, we're, we're killing it with a lot of animal products, animal protein. High omega-6s that are inflammatory. So what that does is it shrinks up the uh, vessels. Mm. It, it, it really puts a, a clamp on that vessel. And then it creates angiogenesis where other things start to grow from that vessel. Mm. Angio meaning vessel, you know, genesis meaning the birth of a, a new vessel. So you don't want that happen because that starts a tumor that creates cancer cells, you know, proliferation starts to happen. So this is what atherosclerosis is, you know. When we were talking about cholesterol a little earlier, that's what atherosclerosis is. It's basically that plaque start to build up and that pressure, you, you know, you blow up a balloon on one side, you hold it this side, it's going to have too much pressure over there. All right, so heart disease is basically a choice, right? Mm -hmm. We would say it's a choice. It's not something that you're supposed to. It's a choice. It's a choice. You don't have to have that because you can just simply say, I don't want this pizza or I don't want this, I want this apple. Only you control what you put You control, in. you control that situation. So um, I, I basically start looking at like um, some vegan options at the different restaurants and stuff. So I figured I can go to the restaurant and go get me a salad. Not me. Yeah. You know, I was thinking that, you know, but then I start looking up the things that's inside of the salad not, not saying something wrong with the lettuce, but what I'm saying is, is that they have to keep this stuff fresh all day, every day. They're not buying fresh salads all the time. You can't go to the restaurant and go get salads because they're dusting it with some propylene glycerol. And that stuff is coming from, you know, basically they could put that stuff in antifreeze. They're dusting it just to keep it fresh. You can see that on the label. See, we got to start looking up these ingredients, people. These are, these are facts. So, I mean, we're going to be talking a lot about phytochemistry. Y'all know some of the mechanisms right now, what's going on with high blood pressure. We want to try to find out what chemicals or phytochemistry that we're talking about, what chemicals can kill this cancer, what chemicals can kill these viruses. All these things that we're dealing with, we want to create apoptosis. That means cell death. We got to kill the uh, cancer cells. So um, that's what I'm pretty much showing here is that there are many phytonutrients or phytochemicals that we need, like this uh, isothiocyanates. Mm -hmm. It's easy word to, to kind of spell, it. isothiocyanates. It's basically uh, part of this brassica family, the cruciferous vegetable family, which you have the kale, the broccoli, the cabbage, the cauliflower, the turnips, the uh, rutabagas, and bok chow. Is, and this is what kills the cancer. You know, we got to learn these little chemicals so we'll know what's going to kill it. So, you know, basically, whatever we feed ourselves, we are actually either feeding the disease or we're fighting the disease. Um, there are people that may have a bacteria. A bacteria that, you know, people may get from eating a lot of meat, maybe H. pylori. You heard of H. pylori, right? If you use isothiocyanates, you basically inhibit the whole transaction of it happening. You won't have H. pylori if you eat these foods. See, the, the medications that they give you, like antibiotics, it attacks the bacteria after the fact. We want to get it before the fact, right? So that way you don't have an ulcer or a stomach cancer or gastritis or anything like that. We got to start having more of the broccoli I brought some uh, organic broccoli powder up here because it has four isothiocyanates to one. And it's probably the highest quality organic broccoli that I can find. We definitely got to have more of this broccoli. So it has other little phytochemicals inside of the isothiocyanates. I call them ITCs. I don't want to keep saying uh, big words, but they have this SFN or sulforaphane. Like I said, all this stuff is found in those type of vegetables. And they also have another one called DIM. 
and it basically helps metabolize all of those estrogens in your body, all of those testosterone, everything that you know has to do with your cholesterol. So if you're having more of your DIM, you're gonna definitely uh, start making those super oxidase uh, enzymes work inside your, your liver. You really gotta get those to working. If you want to get rid of carcinogens, cancer cells and viral cells, uh, any type of malignancies or abnormal cell growth in your body, that's the way you do it. You have to have more of the uh, green leafy vegetables. So some of the benefits from sulforaphane, we already know that it reduces inflammation. And if you're having some cracks and things inside your vessels, this is what's going to reduce that inflammation. And then there's another part. We have an antioxidant pathway, an antioxidant pathway that allows um, the, the, the modulation of how, how they work on different parts of the body. Like there could be a cancer cell over here, but the NERF2 pathway allows it to reactivate and, and then disseminate it throughout the body. So a lot of children don't like broccoli, do they? That's right. They need it. They actually need it. As far as like Alzheimer's or any time, it's a prevention from all of that. So the organic broccoli powder is a, a great product to use for us, these ITCs. So inside of this NERF2 activators, these are other things that are found. The turmeric. Turmeric is a good pain uh, modulator. If you use about 95% of the curcumin that's inside of the turmeric, you will activate that NERF2 pathway. You know, it will stop you from having that inflammation. Uh, these are just regular food people. This is how we eat to get rid of high blood pressure. This is how you eat to get rid of most of all of these conditions. Everybody know about garlic, right? You want to swallow um, pieces of the cloves of the garlic. Um, so there's an a enzyme that is being a activated inside of garlic called allen, and it changes from allanase to allicin. Right, I'm, I'm talking about phytochemistry. I'm talking about all the chemical compounds inside of it. These are like the sofa compounds. Mm -hmm. If you want to reduce your blood pressure, you eat more garlic. You want to even okay. apply it with some lemon and some honey and all those different things. You can make it not be so bad. Um, it improves your circulation. The garlic um, basically found over there in the, on the pyramids, on the, on the walls, they have that as a, a remedy to, uh, as our natural antibiotic. Okay. We're supposed to be using this because um, we have viral genes and we got to learn how to inactivate those viral genes. Um, you don't want them to get too high or they'll start to you know, decrease our immune function. I did a couple of little studies just to see how it shrinks cancer cells. Uh, uh, there's some immune functionality that it has to, to break down interferons inside of your, your DNA structures. You can get rid of things like herpes, HIV, all those different type of things. You can lessen that viral count just by having more of your garlic. So uh, there's another rule with garlic because wherever you see a sulfur compound, it's always going to be double bonded to an oxygen. So like I have a cell repair uh, product over here that I add MSM sulfur to because um, basically it helps go in and it's a beautifying type of element you know this this molecule of sulfoxide is very antibacterial and antifungal um, it helps get rid of that that stickiness inside of our blood you know you don't want it like like mm -hmm. really sticky it starts to stick to the cell walls the arterial walls and break up it break, breaks up platelets mm -hmm. so any white blood cells that like to stick together and make little tumors access on the, wherever it is it breaks up that aggregation uh, everybody heard of aromatase? Well, um, I talk about the inhibiting foods, but aromatase basically is the uh, enzyme that has to do with our, our transfer or conversion between um, estrogens, our estrogens in our body. It takes the estradiol and, trans and, and converts it over to estrone if you have too much aromatase enzyme inside the body. It takes those type of foods like the cruciferous vegetables to uh, get rid of that aromatase. Gynomycea actually starts, basically man boobs actually starts because of the too much aromatase enzyme. You're getting too much estrogen. So if he was eating more foods like this, the person would not have 
uh, more of a female characteristics, you know? Uh, that's what happens when you have too much estrogen. Or, or with a woman, if she has um, estrogen dominance, she would need to start eating more of these type of foods. So um, you was talking about cholesterol, and we know that hormones are made from cholesterol. All this different pathway that's up here right now, how it goes from pregnenolone all the way to seven hydroxypregnenolone, all these different pathways that's going on. Basically what makes our cortisol, what makes our estrogens and testosterone. But right there in the middle we have that aromatasing. But if you're having with too much estrogen, that's what's gonna happen. So to have a healthy cycle as a woman, you wanna have aromatase inhibitors. You wanna eat more aromatase inhibitors. So eat more flax seeds, put them in your smoothies. These are the things that's gonna stop us from being constipated. This is another phytochemistry that we need to know about. So anybody that's going through Crohn's disease or colitis, SIBO bacteria, you won't have the SIBO, the, the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that happens inside of the gut. You won't have that if you eat more mm -hmm. flax seeds. We gotta have more mushrooms, people. They're, they are like, I put on there, I said the queen of super immunity. They promote healthy bacteria. This, this angiogenesis that I've been telling y'all about, how it grows new blood vessels, um, you don't want to supply the cancer cell with more oxygen. You, know, you want to be able to cut that off. Yeah. So those mushrooms have that uh, effect. So I got a product called the stabilizer back here that helps cut off that blood vessel. They have, uh, you heard of reishi, shiitake, mm -hmm. maitake, mm -hmm. portobellas. Mm -hmm. It's like a web they create mm -hmm. inside the body. But it creates a web of protection inside of us yeah. mm -hmm. as well. It creates, stops that angiogenic effect. Like I said, this is our, that queen of super immunity. You know, we, got, we, we found out the king was the cruciferous vegetables. We gotta have those, but uh, that agaric is up there. I found in studies, it basically can um, attach to interferons inside of our blood cells, make it more noticeable for our T cells to find. Like these are our immune cells, our fighter cells, our natural killer cells. So it lights them up? Yeah, yeah. And that way they can get ready for phagocytosis. It can bring macrophages over there to go ahead and kill it and take it on out the body. Um, I put up some natural cures up here. Some, some things that can probably help us get rid of uh, some of the ailments of uh, strokes, uh, headaches. Um, one thing you should know about the high blood pressure, about cayenne. Cayenne can stop a, a heart attack on the spot, like within 10 seconds. You can't use the cayenne that's in you know, the grocery store. It's only about 30 uh, SHUs, they measure in them in heat. Yeah, that's right. So you need something that's around about 40, 40,000 SHUs. Yeah, that's right. You can look up uh, online to find out the hottest component of the uh, cayenne, but um, it helps with the circulation. It helps with uh, lowering the blood pressure. The cayenne acts as a catalyst too. So if you're having some heart problems, and I put some hawthorn, hawthorn berry in there, mm, yeah. the, the, the cayenne helps mobilize it faster, yeah, you know? That's right. uh, any clogged arteries, you know, clogged arteries, then that plaque starts to build up. You wanna use fats, not the, not the meat fats, but fats like avocados. Those will have those phytonutrients that can really lower the blood pressure, lower the cholesterol. This should be your physician right there. When you go to the farm or you go to a real pharmacy is the produce side of the grocery store. Uh, everything else in the grocery store, you don't need to be over there. You have a more appreciation and love for what you're doing, you know, what you're eating, what you put in your body. We pretty much talked about the lymphatic system, the high blood pressure thing.